So um, Mark is here. Mention when searching for publishing deals, what is discussed? I mean, what is considered a fair deal for distribution um, for your book or series of books, right? I want to stress that I am a self-publishing strategist. So the emphasis is on self-publishing. Uh, However, I did have a year of, of experience working under a uh, publishing firm um, or publishing company. And I'm going to say this, Marcus, I do need clarity because distribution is just one aspect of a publishing deal, of a publishing contract. So for the sake of answering your question, I'm going to talk about distribution, but then I'm going to cover other aspects um, to consider when, you know, you have a publishing uh, contract presented before you. And so distribution simply means getting your book out there to different platforms, right? Traditional publishers, what they use is a full service distributor. So that's where you ship your book to the warehouse. And then, you know, it's hosted there. And then when Barnes and Nobles, Walmart, Target, Books a Million, um, the, the airport retailer, when all of those are, are needing those particular books, they'll, you know, call up or send an um, uh, invoice or order to the warehouse. And then the books are shipped out to those um, locations. All right. And so... When you have a deal before you, you want to consider the first print run. That just means the first batch of books they are printing. And generally when there is a large print run, you know, maybe 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, they truly believe in you as an author. Um, and this number can change, but generally a, what a publishing company considers successful um, book is at least 10,000 copies over the life of the book, right? Um, and so when it comes to self-publishing, a lot of authors don't even get over 250 copies of the life of the book. And so you just want to think about that. Are you, for a publisher to take you on in the first print run, if they feel like your book is going to sell, um, you know, 10,000 copies, then they definitely believe that you are a success. And I would say the big five, but right now, the time of this video, they're, um, they're, uh, the two of the publishing companies are in court uh, with trying to merge, and there's a whole issue. So the big five could potentially be the big four. And so generally, these big publishing companies have a relationship with the big retailers, like I was saying before. So it's easier for them to get on the bookshelves of the Barnes & Nobles, Walmart, the, the airport uh, stores, books and millions, et cetera. However, as a self-published author, it, while it may be challenging, it is possible to get your book on the bookshelves of these major uh, retailers. Barnes & Noble has like a, I believe a, a print on demand type uh, publishing arm. I don't know if it's like within a year's time frame. I haven't looked too much into that. Um, Target, you can... I think if you go on their website, I was on there recently and I didn't see like contact information, but they do say, hey, we do accept books. Um, of course, you know, nothing that talks about suicide, violence, et cetera. But I didn't see like a um, like a submission form or contact information. So you just have to do your research to kind of reach out to them if you are going the self-publishing route. But if you have a traditional publishing contract this is generally what's handled for you on your behalf now so i hope that answer your question about the distribution aspect of a publishing contract however just in case um that's not exactly what you're looking for then i do want to talk about the other aspects three other things which are the royalties the advances and then the rights right um the rights that you are giving up as an author is so, so, so important. So first we want to talk about the royalties. And so the book royalties is, it is, ugh, tongue tied. Book royalties is the amount of money that you will get per book sale, per book sold, excuse me. So, um, and generally it's a percentage, roughly 10% as in, you know, you can be five to 12.5. It just depends on, 
if it's paperback or hardback, as well as the type of, uh, I guess, juice, clout, pull, whatever that you have, right? So if you're coming to a publisher and you have an audience of a half a million or even 50,000, um, and so they just look at 10% of your audience that purchased. So if you have a uh, 50,000 followers, just 10% is 5,000 people, right? You're halfway there in their mind of what a successful uh, published book is. So just think about um, the percentage that you'll be receiving per book sold. And so there are two types of royalties that you need to be mindful of. You have the published price and then the price received okay so the published price is what we're all familiar with right so if you sell a book or if a book is sold for ten dollars on the shelf and your royalty is ten percent you would get one dollar per book sold all right so just think about that that is the um published price all right so the retail price times the percentage of your royalties that is how much you're getting now you have the perceived price which uh, publishers are kind of going more into because it saves them more money, um, but it's less money for the author. So the uh, price received is the price that the um, bookstore, the retailer is receiving it. So when you list your book on Ingram or any other platform, generally the royalties, um, the wholesale discount you give, I believe it's 30 to 55 or 35 to 55 within that window. But for simple math, we're going to say 50%. So a bookstore gets your book at a 50% discount. That's not the, the uh, buyer, the uh, reader, the end result. That's just Barnes & Noble's get your book at 50% off. So instead of them paying $10, they're getting your book at $5. And at the price received, and if uh, that's what your royalty is based off of, Instead of you getting $1, you're getting 50 cents off of that because the wholesaler or the publisher only made $5 off of that, right? Because the um, Barnes & Noble purchased it from $5 from the publisher and the publisher, that's the amount of money they make. So they're going to pay you 10% of the $5 that leaves you with 50%, I mean 50 cents. So um, just think about that. Um, so when you're looking at your contract royalties, the percentage and is it published price or is it a uh, price received? All right. The next thing is advanced. And that is the money that you're getting um, prior to your book being sold, right? So the more money that they give you up front, your advancement, uh, is an indication of how confident they are that your book is going to sell. And so I know some of us may, you know, hear about these six-figure advancements. But that's generally when you come with a track record in the audience, right? You really have to have, I mean, I'm just throwing numbers out there. But to say I have one million or half a million followers because they need to see that they're taking a risk on taking on your book, handling all the costs of editing, the book cover, all this staff it has to pay, um, distribution, the warehouse, warehouse costs, all that cost takes money. So... When you're thinking about a six-figure advancement, um, you need to be coming with the, um, your own audience. And generally, if you have that and if you're business savvy and want to do the work, going the uh, traditional publishing route, you might as well just do it yourself. If you are business savvy, you understand, and this is something you want to take on that responsibility. If not, go ahead and get your six-figure deal. Live your best life. But... Most first times authors with a uh, tradition, pu traditional publishing company, you're going to get around five to 10,000. But I'm even going to say it's not unusual for you to sign a deal without an advancement. So, pretty much, you sign a deal, you do not get any money up front. And however, they take on all the costs of you know the marketing, production, editing, etc. Then once they recoup their costs from the books sold, then you start getting your 10%, 12%, 7% per book sold, right? And I just saw that there's something called profit sharing, which the royalties um, are paid when the book sales have been covered. So once again, generally that's like a 50-50 split. And that's between the publisher and author. So 
you just want to think about all that the advancement and you have to understand that the larger the greater the advancement that means that you the publishing company has to recoup that money prior to you start getting your royalties so for simple math let's just say you are making one dollar per book sold let's just say your advancement is a thousand dollars basic math so you have to sell a thousand books before you can start getting your 10% you know additional dollar for every book sold so even though it's an advancement you still have to pay them back right they're just giving advancement on your check now you may be like well heck you know as long as i got my money i don't care that may be good for you however if you want to do you know have another traditional uh publishing deal and if they the publishing company do not recoup the advancement of their money from all the books sold or not sold, then you will be perceived as a risk for future advancements. And they don't want to take you on. Like who would want to take on something that has cost them or lost them money? The last one I have here is rights. These are your rights as an author. So you want to look into what type of rights are you giving up? You should keep your copyright. I'm hoping, I don't know, you know, if it's not with the big five or four, be mindful of the rights that you are signing away. Are you giving them exclusive rights where they are the first to publish your book and then maybe you have the opportunity to go elsewhere? Um, what type of territories are they publishing in? Generally, you'll have, you know, I guess exclusive rights, first rights, whatever, um, in all English speaking territories so u.s and uk um or is it just the u.s are they able to translate your book right so maybe um the agreement is you definitely don't want to give up all rights so maybe the agreement is they have rights to the english version for u.s so great that's what they hold so maybe if being in the publishing industry after a year or two you're like you know what i understand this a little bit more um, and I could do this on my own. You go get your book translated. Um, and, and then you, as an author, can sell your book. Let's say you get it translated to Spanish. You could sell it in Mexico, Spain, Argentina, all the different Spanish-speaking um, countries, nationalities, etc. cetera, um, as long as you're not interfering, interfering on their rights, right? There's nothing that's contradict, contradicting the contract, the agreement that you signed with them. Um, are you giving them worldwide rights? Whole world. Will you retain your rights for TV and film? You have to think about that. Because um, if you're very hopeful that the, your book can be made into or adopted into a, a television series or a movie, are you going to keep those rights? Or are you going to give it up where they get you know, to license it out and they get um, that, that money from that and maybe you get a percentage? Maybe you don't. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then what about revisions or even the out of print clause? And I just saw this um, recently as far as if, let's say after two years, your book, you know, there's it's not getting any traction. But yet your contract is for five years with them. That means that it's three years that they're not going to do anything with your book. So what happens when they take your book out of print, meaning they're not printing it anymore? Do those rights revert back to you or do you just lose three years of that book? You know, so um, depending on if that publisher is like, hey, you know, we're not printing your book anymore. OK, can I get the rights back? And so I can reprint it on my own, do any revisions, et cetera. These are just all the things that you have to think about. These are all the things that I have to think about. As far as when I am extending an, a, a contract to an author. So, Marcus, I hope that has helped you um, as far as that. But I just want to emphasize that I focus on self-publishing, um, teaching people how to do that on their own. Because it is possible. It just is some work. Okay.